So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple demo reports, um, a standard out of box filter, and I'll create a small uh, custom uh, filter as well. So first I'll just uh, go ahead and make a pie chart. Uh, we're going to want table and we're just going to do it on the problem table. Then we can select pie chart. That's better. <laughs> And then I'll just do created um, in this last year. All right, then we can go ahead and save that report. Then I'll also make another report for list for that same table. And I'll just do all for this. And I don't want it to group by anything. Then I'll just hit insert and stay. Then we can go ahead and create some uh, interactive filters. So you just go to the uh, interactive filter table and create new. Um, we can do a, a reference. We can say, I only want a single input. We want the reference table. So I'm going to do business services. We're going to hit save. And then if you go down to the related list, you can select which table you want it to apply to in that field to apply to. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to create a custom filter. So for that, we're going to have to create a dynamic content block. So you have some jelly tags um, in here. You can use jelly. You don't necessarily need to use jelly. Um, so for this example, I'm actually not even going to really use any jelly at all. So for what I'm going to do is I'm going to create uh, just a simple filter with two buttons um, to show how uh, the filtering could work. So variable filter, then we're going to create a new dashboard message handler. And then this is where you'd give it a uh, unique name. And I'll close the script tag. And then we can just make uh, some simple input buttons. First script is missing a T. Ah, thank you. I'm going to make this a button. And then on click, we'll have it be that remove function. So And then we'll do another input for just uh, showing the ones that are assigned to the current user using it. And 
and we use the publish uh, filter method. And then this is where you add in your table name and then your, your filter that you want. Hopefully I typed this all correctly. We can go ahead and submit. And so now I'll take you back to the dashboard and now we can go ahead and start adding the things we just created. So first we can go and add the two reports that I just created. I'll stick this one up here and then we can go and add that reference field that I created. And this is all, you know, shape and size and move uh, to wherever you'd like. And then for the custom one that I created is going to be under content block. And what did I just do? We called it test. Well, at least the buttons are rendering correctly. So that's a good sign. So now that we have these on your dashboard, you're going to want to uh, set your reports to be able to follow them. So you can go while you have the plus icon um, opened, you can modify everything on the dashboard. So you'd go into your gear and have follow interactive filter selected. And then you can also select show when following filter. So this will show um, if that report is following a filter or not. And then for this pie chart, since it's one of the uh, types of reports that can act as an interactive filter, you have that option as act as an interactive filter. And you can also have it follow other interactive filters as well. So first we can take a look at this reference field that we created. So say I only want to see the business service problems with business surface as BlackBerry. So now I can see this pie chart was filtered to only show the three back BlackBerry uh, problems as well as the list records are only showing the problems with the business service being BlackBerry. We can go back and see all and then we can also hit only mine. So now there's only one that is assigned to me currently, the system admin. And if we hit remove filter, it's going to hide that. And then now that this pie chart is also could potentially act as an interactive filter, you could select that slice. So it's going to show only the ones that were uh, PeopleSoft Enterprise. Now it's going to show uh, filter this list to only show that single record. And then also right here, this icon, this filter. So that means it's following a filter. So that's that option to uh, show when filtering. If you didn't have that selected, uh, that filter isn't going to show anymore. Um, so now I also have a dashboard showing the different standard out of box filters that you can create just to see how uh, you could kind of take a look at them. Uh, so this one is a cascading uh, filter. So you'd have to select um, the manager first um, before you can see what uh, apply which groups to only show. So if you only wanted to see the ones where the manager is this person, and then it's only going to limit the groups to show which um, ones he's a, a part of, uh, then you can see now the assignment group is showing as network versus Don. He's the manager of two groups. Those were filtering on the new state. 
Um, so we can go ahead and apply. So here we go. Now uh, we have the different states because showing for all versus uh, the specific one that you wanted. And it had the defaults set as, as new. So that's one of the things with the defaults. You're going to want to be careful with that. And then also just, you know, if, if you selected this, the next time you're going to come back, it's going to be on this state choice filter already. Um, so you're going to want to come in here and hit that reset filter. It does bring it back to that default value that we had specified uh, in that filter. But um, everything else, if it didn't have a default filter, it's going to uh, reset. And then that reset filter is the, the one I was talking about where um, that only applies to the standard out of box filters. It's not going to reset your custom ones. So you'd have to say refresh your page or uh, create your own button uh, to clear all of the custom ones that you have created. Um, so you also have this group by filter. So this is the one where you can filter on different fields, but only show it in a single widget. So if you want incident opened um, in the last three months and the priority is planning, you can apply that. It's not as intuitive to potentially know which options you're going for, um, but you can do it. So you have also open by, so this is going to be a date field. Uh, it is limited, the out of box one. So you can't select specific days or ranges of days, but you get the, the general options of uh, ranges that you can select. So in the last six months you had these. And then you can filter on, well, that one doesn't work. Oh, these are all new, but um, so if you had uh, the category as help and inquiry, you can go ahead and apply that. This is also a multi-select, so it's going to be an either or. Um, so if the category is help and inquiry or hardware, it's going to show all of the records that match. Um, apparently there's not many different categories. <laughs> oh, but I also have new state. Got to remember that. <laughs> so network, database, and help and inquiry. So it's a it's an or within itself. Um, and then same thing, just another uh, field where uh, you can select uh, the different options. So each one between them are, um, are ands, but within themselves, if they're multi-select, they're going to be ors. Then I also created a bunch of uh, custom filters that you don't have uh, available. So this was just another similar one, the, uh, the two assigned or to only me or all tasks. Um, you also have a string field. So I have it set to uh, look at the, uh, the short description. So I can hit search. So now it's gonna have anything that contains tests. So I, I made this one to just um, be, basically be a wild card search for um, the input. And I also have a clear that will filter that out. Um, we also have some list fields that you don't have the ability to create a standard out of box. Um, so I created different types. Uh, so this one is showing um, a list field with values with just users starting with F. And this is, I believe, looking at the work notes list field. So we can go ahead and see the ones where Fred is in that list field. This same thing is going to be an or situation. So show all the records where Fred or Frankie um, are in. So as you can see, work notes list is dynamic to these two sys ID users. So I have that uh, clear button or if there's no checkboxes at all selected, um, it clears that filter. 
I also have same thing list field, but instead of it being check boxes, it's kind of your standard um, list field where and this is looking at the watch list. So we're going to select um, a few different people. There's probably not a lot because I didn't add a lot. Um, but this, so right now it's checking um, for all the records where the watch list contains either Abel, Abraham, um, and you can see same thing, watch list um, has any of these values in itself. And then this date custom field filter that um, I didn't create it. I found this on the community. I did modify it slightly, um, but this gives you your more standard options to uh, filter on the date. So if I want um, ones that were opened today, I can actually specify that. Or if I want um, between certain days. So we can go ahead and select between, you know, for the last month, and it's going to show uh, that the ones created within the state range. So it gives you the more, um, more options for, for date filtering. And so actually, I'll also um, show you some of the code behind these. So you can get as complex or simple as you need to be. Um, so this one is actually using some jelly uh, to to go through and build it. Uh, so right now you have your just standard Glide record query and pushing all of the user records into an array. So this is querying for all the users that start with the letter F for their name. And it's pushing all of the objects into an array. And then below we have it looping through that uh, array and creating checkboxes for each of those options in the array. And then you have different scripts to set the different filters uh, for whatever um, options that you selected. And then you can put some styling in there as well. And then, so this was, again, with the dynamic content, uh, but the one that I found on the community, that uh, date one, it actually used a widget and a macro. So an interesting thing for this was they created a widget where you could select a bunch of different uh, tables uh, that it would apply to, and then it's rendering the macro and then in the macro, it's doing all of the, uh, the code to uh, figure out um, what that filter would be. So you have, these are all of the, the options in that choice list. Um, and then you have, these are all of the, the filter types that, that correspond with your choices. And again, this thing is massive. Um, so you can go pretty deep into the functionality that you may need. And then, so an interesting thing, the way they built that is when you come and add that specific widget, it's actually going to be under um, the widget name that, I, uh, that was created. So I created it as a custom interactive filter dates. And then these are the three um, options that I selected in that widget. So you have the open date chain on for change, incident, and problem. And then you could go ahead and just add each individual one to your, to your dashboard. There's a lot of different uh, things that you can definitely create with uh, these filters and uh, could potentially help you out with, with a lot of different things. Mm -hmm.